We made it. We made it. It is WNBA playoff time this weekend on Sunday. We'll see the first games of the first round. The playoff bracket is now set. Today, I want to run through my predictions for each round, every game, how many games I think these series will go, the keys, and more. To kick it off, first round in the top left, we have the number one New York Liberty going up against the Atlanta Dream. For me here, this is an easy, easy pick. With New York, this team is way too good at home. I see no chance, really, that this goes back to Atlanta for a Game 3. There's a slight possibility that you have Ryan Howard, you have Tina Charles, Alicia Gray. Those players can score the basketball enough to where I could see one of the first two games being tight. I don't think Atlanta would win just because New York is such a complete team with the depth to go a full full quarter game. So even if Atlanta can't win a game, I think they could compete enough in at least one game. Next, the most interesting first round matchup, the Las Vegas Aces looking to win their third straight championship in 2024. But to get there, they have to face the Seattle Storm, the five seed in round one. Seattle was one of the worst teams last season in 2023. They added Skylar Diggins-Smith, Neko Gumake, who have been two of the best players at their position this season. Juliet hasn't been as terrific this season in terms of her efficiency, but still one of the best scorers in basketball. She can get hot in the playoffs, is an awesome all-time playoff performer. So with this series on Seattle's side of things, it comes down to whether they can make threes and more importantly, Jewel Lloyd. If Jewel Lloyd can have a legendary three-game stretch, they could seriously win the series. If Jewel Lloyd plays how she's played in the regular season, she shoots 35% from the field, 28% from three or whatever, you're not going to beat Las Vegas. The numbers game, Las Vegas is going to make more threes. You just don't have much of a chance. So for me, I'm not banking on that and it happening. It could happen and I could come out of this video and look very dumb. But for me, I think it goes three games. Las Vegas wins two, Seattle wins one, setting up a rematch of last year's finals in the second round between New York and Las Vegas. And then moving to the other side of the bracket, we have the two-seed Minnesota Lynx going up against the seven-seed Phoenix Mercury. Minnesota, just a beautiful basketball team to watch with their ball movement, three-point shooting, defensive mind as well, being switchable, having so much versatility on both ends of the floor. I was wrong about this team. I didn't think they were going to be a playoff team because of just not having like some exceptional second star, but Kayla McBride's taken a massive late career leap where she's having like the best year of her career. Bridget Carlton's having the best year of her career. Courtney Williams arguably having like one of the best years of her career as well, like from a complete game standpoint, from a playmaking standpoint, defense, all of it together has been awesome this season. For Phoenix, you have Brittany Griner, you have Kalia Copper, who you got in a trade in the offseason. You also still have Dinah Taurasi, Natasha Cloud, who you signed in for agency. You have the talent to win a first round series. But my main question is the defense. This Phoenix team has not been great defensively this season. They've been well below league average this season. So this Minnesota team is so dynamic offensively. They can go five out. Brittany Griner's movement skills are just nowhere that they were in her prime in like 2015-ish. So for Phoenix here, we know Minnesota's going to want to put Griner in the action, get her on the perimeter, make her defend in space. Also, you also have Dinah Taurasi, who is a defensive liability. Sophie Cunningham isn't a league average defender either. So where do you put them? There's no non-factor offensive player on Minnesota's team. So it's just really tough there to really project how Phoenix is going to match up with Minnesota. And for that reason, I think Minnesota sweeps Phoenix here. They could steal a game, it's possible. But one interesting nugget that I did find is that Griner shot 30% from the field in her three games against Minnesota in the regular season. For reference, she was over 50% against all 10 other teams. Minnesota is smaller. Their big Elena Smith is six foot three. But Griner did struggle against them in the regular season, so we'll see there. It's possible she turns it around come playoff time. And then the final first round matchup, three seed Connecticut Sun against a six seed Indiana Fever. This matchup is going to set a ton of records, viewership records. It's going to be a blast to watch. My concern is Indiana is incredibly young. Historically, it's tough for super, super young teams with no playoff experience 
to win a first round matchup, to go far in the playoffs. It's possible. But my other concern is Indiana's way better at home than on the road. Can they force a game three at home and win it? If they go to a game three, I would feel more confident about them winning, but still Connecticut, I'm taking them here in three games just because they have Alyssa Thomas who has finals experience, DeWanna Bonner as well. They have some other players as well that are just really complimentary players. The concerns for Connecticut is, can you score enough points? The concerns for Indiana is, can you defend? The good part about this matchup is Connecticut isn't some juggernaut offensive team. They're very good, but they don't play at the fastest pace. So it's possible that Indiana could hold their own. Caitlin Clark's been one of the best players in basketball pretty much all season, but especially over the last half of the season. She has been historically one of the best point guard seasons ever over the last half of the season. But in the regular season, Indiana went 1-3 against Connecticut. But what is to consider about that is they played Connecticut three times from May to June when Indiana was not a great team. They were like one of the worst teams in the league at that point. But they did play them again in August, and they won that game by four points. I'm taking Connecticut just because of the experience factor, but it wouldn't surprise me if Indiana won this series. Now on to the second round, New York against Las Vegas. If we get this matchup, it would be an absolute blast. I think it goes five games, and I'm taking New York in five. I said it in a recent video, I float from having Las Vegas as my finals favorite to New York. I think this New York team is just super, super talented. They have more depth than Las Vegas. I think they're more complete defensively. I just think this Las Vegas team has way more flaws than New York does, where they just don't have many flaws. They can fill so many gaps. John Cole Jones has been better this season. Sabrina has been better this season. Stewie's turned it on late. The shots come back and she's making threes. This team is complete. They have so much talent across the board. Las Vegas could win it all again this year. It's possible. Chelsea Gray is an all-time playoff performer. Asia Wilson's having a historic season. Jackie Young, Kelsey Plum, Tiffany Hayes has been playing well as, as well off the bench. This team is talented. I hope it goes five games, and I have New York in five here. And then for the other second-round matchup, two-seed Minnesota against three-seed Connecticut. What's interesting about this matchup is Minnesota had a winning regular season record against New York and Las Vegas, but not against Connecticut, which is super fascinating when you consider these teams are likely to match up in the second round. For me here, though, I'm taking Minnesota in four just because of the offensive factor. I don't trust Connecticut's offense enough, and I also think Minnesota's defense has been like towing, toe -to they've been toe-to-toe -to -toe defensively this year. I'm pretty sure it's like a super close gap between the number one defense in Connecticut, number two defense in Minnesota. But Minnesota's offense is much better. I think they have less flaws offensively. Connecticut's shooting is a massive worry. Dewana Bonner is extremely streaky. Minnesota having Nafisa Collier surrounded by a ton of shooters. I think this sets it up well to where I think we're going to see a Commissioner's Cup rematch between New York and Minnesota in the finals. Like the Commissioner's Cup went, Minnesota won that game. But here in the finals, I'm taking New York in four. I don't think it goes five. It could go five. It could also be a sweep for New York. They're just so dominant. I wouldn't be surprised if they won like two to three close games and swept them in the finals. This New York team is my finals favorite. For Minnesota to win a championship, I think I'm rooting for Minnesota. Just quietly rooting for Minnesota. Just because... You have New York, who is a super team. Las Vegas, who has built this super team as well. Phoenix has taken the super team strategy. They're not a super team, but they are taking that strategy. Same with Seattle. This Minnesota team wasn't built that way. They signed just good basketball players who weren't superstars. They drafted Navisa Collier, but everybody else was a free agent acquisition. And yeah, pretty much the entire team is a free agent acquisition, which is pretty interesting. Brid uh, Bridget Carlton was internal development, player development. So I think if Minnesota won the championship, it could be huge for the future of team building, how teams approach building teams from like a stylistic standpoint as well, of like having five shooters in the court, ball movement, no isolation. I think this could change basketball if Minnesota won the finals. Like I said in a previous video as well, Teams are always going to try to build a super team, even if Minnesota wins a championship, but I think it could change 
how some teams approach this, especially with some expansion teams coming in. They could look at this approach of Minnesota. They're like, oh, we don't have a bunch of superstars. We're a young team. Let's, let's take the Minnesota strategy and try to build our team out that way rather than going the super team strategy. It's interesting. I'm going to say New York wins it. I also think whoever wins the matchup between New York and Las Vegas probably wins a championship. I think Las Vegas is my second favorite behind New York and then Minnesota. If Las Vegas played against Minnesota in the finals, I think it might go five games. Minnesota could win that series. It's fascinating. Let me know your picks in the comments below, what you agree and disagree with. Super excited for the playoffs. A ton of coverage on the way covering the playoffs, but also the teams got eliminated. We'll be talking about a ton across the board. Prospect scouting reports as well coming soon. Anyways, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.